So I would like to introduce our first keynote speaker, Mr. Vijay Sethi, CIO, CHRO, and Head CSR, Hero Motor Corp. Rated as India's best CIO, Mr. Sethi has won several prestigious recognitions, including CIO of the Year, Super League CIO, Champion CIO, Global CIO, Global CIO, Hall of Fame, uh, Most Influential CIO, India's Best IT Manager, the list goes on. He has also won numerous CSR Leadership Awards and has featured in the list of India's 50 Most Talented CSR Leaders and world's top 100 most impactful CSR leaders. Mr. Sethi is a member of various national forums, including chairman of IT committee, CM, CII, and is also a board member of SAP India Users Group, INDUS. A regular speaker at various institutes and forums, Mr. Sethi holds a master's in industrial engineering and MBA in materials management. The topic he is going to discuss today is Connected Vehicles Landscape, India. Over to you, Mr. Sethi. Very warm welcome to you. Thank you very much. Uh, can you see, uh, see my screen, please? Uh, so not as yet, sir. We can yeah, no, you now start uh, sharing. It's about to share. Yes, we can see it now. Okay, fantastic. Uh, thank you, Anush. Thank you very much. Uh, I was just uh, listening to the panelists, uh, wonderful discussions. Uh, and the points that were being made by Mr. Kati and Parna and everyone else. Thank you very much. Let me just start with thanking uh, Anuj. Uh, Anuj, uh, this is a wonderful initiative that you have taken. Uh, and uh, from a Wafit perspective, going digital, going virtual is really, really fantastic. So thank you very much uh, for all my dear participants. Uh, each one of us needs to be healthy stay home, stay safe. This is a very different time of world and each one of us really needs to ensure that the uh, safety of our own selves, our family, friends is very, very important. So I wish pray each one of us is safe. So what I thought uh, when Anuj told me a couple of days back uh, that you need to do a keynote. Uh, so what I thought instead of having a keynote, I'll start with a story and maybe end with a story. And that's what uh, over the next 15, 20 minutes I'll take you through a story as I see from a connected perspective. So as like any other story, I'll start with once upon a time. So everyone had a peaceful life. Everyone means uh, everyone in the world, whether it was people in IT, people in automotive sector, drivers, anyone and everyone had a very peaceful life. And uh, if you would ask IT people about automobile design, how, what is the issue, vehicle performance, how can I measure, how can I improve, what can be done, how can I, what can I do, or what can IT do to ensure that uh, any guy who's on the road, what can be done, can I really immobilize a vehicle? The general response uh, was, why are you asking me? It's not my job. It's for someone else to. And my job is only to ensure that if there are R&D engineers, automotive engineers are working on it. We provide them with servers, PCs, if they need an email, internet connectivity, all the kinds of softwares, ProE, Katia, anything and everything I'll provide. But don't ask me for anything beyond that. That's my life. And you go back to R&D engineer and ask him as to what it is. What about IT technology in the systems? If you have a car of a two-wheeler, I just heard a question about two-wheeler, I'll respond on that as we move forward. So if you ask the design engineers, R&D people as to how about IT technology, they say, again, why are you asking me? It's not my job. I don't understand technology. I'm an automobile engineer. I'm in the R&D of uh, an automotive company. If you're asking IT questions, go to IT team. And there's one thing, there's only one thing, uh, there are a lot of things, okay, one thing on which they agreed, uh, both of them, uh, so you put all the IT engineers uh, and the R&D engineers in the evening and ask them of a particular thing where they'll surely agree and that, that thing was ACES, that this is what ACES is, this is how we spend time and this is ACES. When people are thinking of that peaceful time, suddenly something happened. What did happen? the world went uh, topsy-turvy. So there's huge change in the world and world was hit by something called a scam, which is my most favorite thing. So 
entire world over last 10, 15, 20 odd years was hit by something called scam. Scam is what? It's not a scam that you're talking of any accounting or financial scam. But social media became very, very popular. Cloud uh, came in. Analytics came in a big way and mobility. So these things started changing the life of all the IT people, all the people in uh, design. And the only option that they were left on while they were just thinking about it, suddenly they had to go to bar. And what is bar? So suddenly blockchain, artificial intelligence, robotics. So these all these things really started uh, impacting the entire ecosystem. So when you have a social cloud analytics, mobile impacting you, you have artificial intelligence impacting you. So the, the word suddenly changed both for IT engineers and for automobile engineers. And now, if you go back to both of them and say as to what is ACES, it's not the earlier ACES, but suddenly the life changed. Both of them would say the same language. The language is A is autonomous. So everyone, whether in IT or in uh, R&D, or even other ecosystems, the suddenly the meaning of the word is C is connected, E is electric, all of us know, and shared mobility, all of us are using. So A is sudden. So suddenly the entire uh, perspective of uh, everyone changed from what we meant, and that also meant that there's a huge amount of collaboration now that's coming up between uh, IT and uh, the R&D engineers. And that when one of the questions which was asked to Mr. Arindam, so maybe we'll just go back to that also on skills as we move forward in case we get time. So if you look at these four letters, S is uh, the key or the biggest thing is uh, connected. Why, to my mind, it's the biggest? Because if you need to have an autonomous vehicle, you need the vehicle to be connected. For really getting an electric vehicle to work, for ensuring that you get the best value of, out of it, the vehicle has to be connected. For ensuring that uh, you use the power of shared mobility, the vehicle has to be connected. So in this entire thing, connected is the key, and that's where I think I must appreciate uh, Anuj once again that he really thought of uh, this particular topic uh, for today, which is about connected vehicles. So now we look at this is where connected is coming and that's the power of uh, thing. So when people talk about connected, one question that comes to mind of each one of us, are you really sure connected is a new phenomenon? Is it that over the last two, three years, we have been talking of uh, connected vehicles running on the roads of Boston or some other places in India, whether it's four wheelers, something being done on two wheelers, telematics, is it really a new thing? The reality is it's not new. Year 1996, let's go back to that. 1996 is what? Maybe almost 24, 25, 24 years back. Uh, this was the car which was uh, world's first connected car, a car by General Motors which had uh, the features of connected. Aim at that time was to have safety and emergency in case there was an accident. So, so connected is not new from one perspective. And objective even in 1996 was that if we can get medical help soon, the chances are that the driver and passengers would survive. But what really happened from 96 and why suddenly we uh, now in 2017, 18 and uh, 20, why suddenly the interest of connected vehicle really gone up because there's been a huge shift in technology over the last many, many years. You look at uh, whether it is about cloud uh, computing, whether it is about networking, whether it is about uh, sensors. So there's a huge amount of uh, changes and enhancements that have happened in technology. That's why connected has suddenly become very popular. Analytics has really taken in a big way. AI, ML, which is artificial intelligence, machine learning has taken up in a big way. So suddenly connected uh, way back in 96, uh, when there was a car which was made, and people really don't talk about it. People have forgotten about it, but today it has become a mainstream thing. Uh, so connected in many of the places is becoming mainstream as we really, and connected is not about when the vehicle is really talking to others outside, but uh, also within the vehicle, there's huge amount of uh, connectivity. And I'll talk about some of these things as we proceed further. Some of the features of connected vehicle, all of us understand vehicle tracking, navigation assistance, traffic assistance, entertainment, whether video or audio, fleet management from a shared perspective in other ways, remote diagnosis over the up air upgrades, remote immobilization, theft, accident alert. But two things which I wanted to discuss today, because most of the first uh, few things all of us understand, but the last two, which is some of the new things which have come up, especially 
they are not there much in India, but uh, in UK, in US, there are a few things which have uh, become kind of mandatory e-call and uh, V2X communication. So I'll spend a couple of minutes on these two as we move forward. Uh, so e-call is an initiative that has been taken in EU, where it's ma getting mandatory that road roadside assistance and automatic crash notification has to be done. There has to be a device which has to be installed in vehicles. What does the device do? It has to automatically dial a number in case there's a road accident. And also send back to the emergency services as to what is the status of airbags, have they really, are they being used, not being used? Also, what are the other sensors saying? So that entire information goes back to the emergency services. And aim is that we reduce the time when the emergency services people come back to the site of accident. Maybe in case of urban areas, uh, reduce the time by 40%. In rural areas, even much more than that. So that's what uh, e-call is uh, coming up in a big way in EU, and I'm, I don't know when it will come in India. The second is uh, V2X. Now, V2X, uh, for let's go back to the concept of V2X. It's like uh, CXO, which is chief. X could be anything, and uh, O is officer. So whether you're CEO, CIO, CHRO, whatever, whatever, whatever. Similarly, V2X is that a vehicle is communicating to anyone, anything. X could be anything. So it's a standard which is being driven by US Department of Transportation where you really create a multi-point network so that a vehicle which is passing could be talking to anything. What could be these anything? That's just taking some examples. For example, over here, the vehicle could be talking to the vehicles on the road so that in case, for example, if there's, you are taking a left turn and there's a vehicle which is really coming from the wrong side, so you give a signal back to the vehicle that, okay, there's a driverless car or there's a connected vehicle, even if the driver is there, you give a signal to the other guy saying that there's something which is happening to the vehicle which is in front of you and aim is to reduce accidents and uh, make the entire uh, journey safer. V2I, it's about infrastructure. Can the vehicle communicate to the infrastructure? What does it mean? Can it uh, communicate in case there's a sensor on the road which tells us that there's a road construction which is going on? Or there's some information over there which says that the conditions of the weather are really bad. So it could be icy conditions, for example, or any hazardous conditions. And vehicle gets that information uh, prior to reaching that place. And so that uh, whatever is a speed or even otherwise for the vehicle that can be adjusted. V2P, which is vehicle to pedestrians. So that we know that in India, there are tons of accidents that happen on a daily basis. 140,000 people die on a yearly basis on Indian roads, and many of them are pedestrians. So can a vehicle really pass on message back to a pedestrian? And objective is that can we reduce accidents? So the message can be passed through, whether, whether through a mobile app or any such thing, we can get into those details. But objective is that a lot of time, pedestrians can't see if there's an oncoming vehicle. So that if the vehicle can communicate back to the pedestrian that, okay, be careful, there's something which is coming up uh, and that's uh, what a big thing is. V2C, V2N, which is the vehicle is communicating back to the cloud or back to the network. Uh, and why is it required? Because at the end of the day, it's about a software. The software needs to be upgraded. There could be issues in the software. There could be maybe some uh, new versions that have come out. Firmware needs to be updated. So over the year update for over the year updates, you need uh, the vehicle to be connected back to the cloud or network at all times. And even for the normal infotainment systems, uh, the vehicle needs to be connected, and that's where V2C, V2N comes in. One of the other things from V2X perspective is V2G, which is again, can the vehicle really talk to grid, electricity grid, power grid, so that if case uh, the vehicle is generating electricity, and we know that uh, there are enough technologies uh, today where vehicle can generate electricity, can it give back power to the grid? or whenever it is required, uh, you take power from the grid. And that's, so these are the kind of things which are going on in uh, US uh, in a big way from V2X perspective. Uh, another thing which I just wanted to leave a thought over here is uh, also there are, uh, from a connected perspective, smart antennas are coming up in a big way. So this is not a regular antennas. All of us have seen antennas in our cars for years and years. Uh, but this is uh, not just receiving that normal signals of a radio or a TV, but it can communicate through GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 3G, whatever, or satellite uh, radio, and get all the information which the car in that's a two-way communication that happens with the corresponding uh, thing, whether it's 
V2V with a vehicle or grid or any other thing, and that's where smart antennas play a huge role. And while all this is happening, I just wanted to also share two more things over here that from a technology perspective, as people are moving into connected vehicles in a big way, there's a huge amount of work, a lot of it being done by startups, a lot of being done by automotive companies, a lot of it being by IT companies and uh, other organizations uh, in the connected space uh, over the year upgrades, how to ensure that the firmware, that software that's there, it becomes so light and uh, you can do over the year upgrades. Data, the amount of data that uh, the companies are really getting, and I remember uh, a few minutes back, uh, Parna was talking about uh, data over here. So how does how do companies really can monetize data? So there's a huge amount of work which is going on over there. Remote troubleshooting, you're going on a car from Delhi to Gurgaon and suddenly there's an issue. What do you do? Can, can someone really troubleshoot the, the entire thing remotely? Because at the end, it's about software, gamification, community building, voice assistance, AIML for predictive maintenance. AIML can be used for many more things uh, in a connected vehicle. And of course, can we really get into a true connected platform for our wheels? So there's a huge amount of work which is going on from a technology perspective. And uh, other question which was asked to Mr. Arindam, which was from a skills perspective, even in the auto industry, skills requirement is undergoing a huge change. And from my HR role perspective, I can share that the requirement of IT skills is increasing in a big way, not just in IT department, but all other functions, especially R&D. So whether, whether it is about the machine learning, artificial intelligence, building all those algorithms, data scientists, because when you get all this data, this data has to be really analyzed, captured, do what, and take actions on that. Embedded software is a big thing. So there's a huge amount of uh, skill requirement from embedded software perspective. Networking, because it's not just uh, 2G, 3G. So there are tons of other types of net networkings which have come in today. So how do you ensure that you pass on information or the vehicle gets information at all the places with the lowest amount of uh, bandwidth requirements? So there's a huge work which is going on and the skills are required for networking. And perhaps one of the most important one in these is cybersecurity, because now, when you know that everything is connected, there's always a chance uh, that someone could hack into the vehicle. So there's a huge amount of requirement from a cybersecurity perspective skills, which is also increasing in a big way. So while uh, there are a lot of positives of a connected vehicle, and I'll come to some of them as uh, later, but there are also a lot of apprehensions that are uh, there globally about connected vehicles. And the, one of the biggest apprehension is about privacy. I am going here from Delhi to Gurgaon. Actually, someone is monitoring, someone is saying that, okay, this guy has reached over there, he's driving, he or she is driving at speed of 40 or doing this or what. So that privacy is a big concern which is uh, coming up uh, from a connected vehicle perspective. Another is uh, a moral dilemma of right, wrong. So where machine is taking a lot of time, machine has to take decisions. So one has to decide as to whether it's right, wrong, so machine is uh, or a vehicle is communicating back to pedestrians at one end vehicles at one end to someone end, and then someone has to take a decision as to which one needs to be uh, better decision so there's always uh, a right wrong dilemma over there another thing which is uh, when people talk of uh, artificial intelligence uh, and putting in a lot of initiatives back into software from a connected vehicle perspective another thing that comes up is uh, there are chances that there could be artificial stupidities also because at the end of the day, it's some, someone who's actually configuring it and the machine is learning on its own, but chances are that uh, there could be some issues and we know that uh, there were issues a couple of years back uh, when not from a connected vehicle perspective, but where some of the bots and uh, others talking started uh, creating something on their own. So this could also lead to, from an artificial intelligence, lead to another part, which is artificial stupidity and some of the actions that could be taken. For example, if firmware needs to be upgraded, you, instead of going to version X, you go to version Y, and suddenly the entire uh, behavior of vehicle changes, or something else, or the signals which are being, uh, which are going from point A to point B, suddenly the it starts going to someone, somebody else. So there could be an artificial stupidity. And of course, the biggest of all these is uh, from an apprehension perspective. Uh, cyber criminals, uh, hackers getting into the vehicles and trying to maneuver whatever is happening over there. So these are some of the apprehensions. Uh, but when you, while you look at those apprehensions, while you look at uh, what is happening, 
I also wanted to just spend two minutes on how people are looking at the future of connected vehicle. Is it really there? Is it something which is bright or just talking about it? So there are enough estimates which says that by 2030, which is just around the corner, 10 years from now, 40% of revenue of auto OEMs will come from new opportunities like shared mobility, fleet operations, EV. And if you look at shared mobility, fleet operations, EV, as I said in my earlier slide, in all these, the key is connectivity. So that means connectivity is going to play a huge role uh, for auto OEMs uh, share of revenue. And we know that we have been uh, reading so many messages and so many uh, articles that shared mobility is here to increase. So there are some estimates that daily rides on shared will increase from 17 to 11 million in 2025. Now with Corona, I don't know how these numbers would change, but these are pre-Corona numbers. Uh, and similarly, by 2025, 17% 70, of rides would be using shared mobility compared to 10% uh, today. Another thing which uh, from year 2016 to 24, uh, the revenues based on connectivity would significantly increase. So whether revenue, so it's not just only the automotive uh, companies which are really gaining from this entire thing, entire ecosystem is really gaining. So infotainment uh, revenues will grow at almost 10% CAGR from 3.6 billion to 7 billion. Telematics, all those companies which make devices or come back to hardware and then the software and all those things. Uh, so that's the ecosystem, other part of ecosystem, which is really taking a huge advantage of this particular phenomena. So the global telematic devices uh, will see us almost 16% CAGR uh, going up to 81 odd million uh, things. And the telematic sales would grow to 72.4 million units. So this is these are the kind of projections. So that means that everyone globally is really bullish about uh, connected vehicles. And when you come into car, primarily from a technology perspective, then wireless connectivity would, would be dominated at Bluetooth. And of course, uh, most of the current telematics devices, we know that they use 2G because that's the, the amount of data uh, shifting is very less. But as we progress, uh, there are already enough signs that one can see that uh, people are shifting from 2G to 4G and even as we move forward to 5G and others, LTE and others. Finally, just to summarize, I started with the connected is key from an ACS perspective. We looked at how the future is going. So connected as I see is future. But when connected is future, my personal view is that future is now. So it's not that there'll be a time when connected would come. Today connected is already there. There's enough work being done on connected in various parts, as I said earlier. So future is now. So each one of us in our organizations really need to work, whether we are in IT, whether we are in uh, R&D or any day function, supply chain or others, or even operations. So each one of us has to start thinking about how the connected will really change our own uh, organization and that future is here. Though I said finally over there, let me just end uh, with a secret. Uh, just remember this, while we may think that uh, someone, some of our competitors have already, already come up with a connected vehicle, we are late, someone is already there, they have captured the entire market. The secret is connected is a journey. No company can say that, yes, I have reached that stage of Nirvana from a connected perspective. It is an evolving thing as the new technologies uh, come up, as the requirements of the users, as I really use a car or a two-wheeler or even a commercial vehicle from a connected perspective, there'll be a lot many ideas that will come in and there'll be more developments which will go on. There'll be a huge development which will be done on artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analytics, even on hardware, softwares, everything. So one can't really say that I have reached that stage that my vehicles are connected, fully connected. It's a journey, it will continue and it will be version one, two, three, four. And as we each one of us moves forward, we need to really continue to work on uh, connected in a big way. This is a journey, as I said, connected is a journey, but what does this journey really do for each one of us? Uh, you are part of any part of the ecosystem. You are an IT consulting company, you are an automotive company, with an automotive company, you are in any department, you are a hardware provider, you are a software provider, you are an integrator, you are maybe an antenna provider, a component provider, anyone. 
each for each one of us uh, this is a journey that can really drive transformational growth of the business we've seen the kind of uh, growth rates that uh, it can really drive and what we also do is generate immense value to the entire ecosystem so it's not just about focusing on automotive uh, companies or OEMs, but the entire ecosystem can really generate immense business value from uh, going through this wave of connected. And it is not that it's some wave which will come in future. It is today and each one of us has to take uh, steps to ensure that we really take immense steps in uh, this thing. With that, I end my presentation. Thank you, each one of you. Thank you, Anuj, uh, once again. God bless each one and uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Great. That's, that is a fantastic keynote, uh, Sidi Saab. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing your, your knowledge, your points. And, you know, we really like the fact that you share in a very candid way that it's not just all hunky-dory. There are lots of open-ended issues on the connected vehicle piece, the security, the privacy, how, you know, the connection will work out, the infrastructure, and also the way you laid out the technology, the entire V2X piece, and also the way you connected to skilling and the uh, earlier panel, panelist thought. It was fantastic. So thank you so very much. And uh, dear uh, attendees, uh, we can take maximum two questions because we're running a little behind schedule. If you have any questions to say this up, please raise your hands and we can take them. And if you don't have any questions, we will assume that Sadi Saab made it absolutely lucid and clear for all of you to understand, which it was for sure. Okay, Thank so you. we assume there are no questions. Thank you, Anuj. I know it's already one. You gave me 20 minutes. So I took uh, 25, 27 minutes. Uh, Thank you very much. So we can listen to the entire day also, so that's not a problem at all. <laughs> no, no, you have, a, you have a schedule and others also have a timeline, so I don't want to yes, sir. Yes, really sir. change. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so schedule. very much, Sadi Saab. Really appreciate you coming over. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Anita, all yours. Thanks, Anuj. And thank you once more, Mr. Sethi. From all of us, uh, your story was so very uh, involved. Even to a layperson like me, I felt connected. So thank you so much for that.